Bob, uh, before we get into this, I, I want to thank you so much for participating in Uncle Tom. Uh, and I hope that you derived as much pleasure uh, as so many people who have seen the film uh, have gotten from watching it. I really did. It's really substantive. Uh, it really takes you into, in, into great detail and depth to understand. And I can understand why even some liberals are shocked by the weight of its content and the passion in which it is expressed. Mm -hmm. I, that's what uh, a lot of conservatives don't seem to understand. They've got the right message, but not the right messengers. Well, and you talked and you about had the right messengers. Uh, there. And, and you talked about that uh, needing a right messenger in the film. You said that we need allies. We need to get involved uh, in the culture, and that's one of the reasons, Bob, why we did this film. Now, in the film, you are on the phone talking to people about your project 1776 to address the 1619 New York Times project. First, tell us what 1619 is, that project, and, and why is it that it bothers you? Because 1619 is an attempt on the part of, of the left, Nicole Hannah-Jones and others, to define America in terms of its slave past. And as a consequence, it... Uh, they are saying that because the founders, uh, well, many of them were slaveholders, and therefore the document of 1776, the Declaration of Independence, is therefore flawed. And they conclude that America is, is forever, in, in, in racism is in its DNA. It defines what it is. It's almost a criminal organization that all whites are, are privileged and therefore victimizes and all blacks are victims. Uh, in need of compensation, but they offer, and, and it's revisionist history. And uh, but it's really, I think, an, an attempt on the part of the of the left to kind of undermine and, and promote a kind of Marxism that that is is really frightening. Mm -hmm. um, and and they're really dumbing down the culture. So they, tell us. And so what? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bob. So what we're doing at the Woodson Center. Since they are, they, the left is using, exploiting America's birth defect of slavery to use that condition as a bludgeon to undermine the, uh, the, 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 the principles upon which this nation was built. So we believe, since they are using race as a messenger, that we would mobilize primarily black scholars and activists uh, not, as, as a counterforce to that, but not to offer an alternative argument but to put forth an inspirational and aspirational uh, narrative that, that refutes and challenges what they do um, by highlighting how when whites were at their worst, blacks were at their best. When, uh, the, that the biggest gains, like, like one of our scholars did a study, Larry, of six major plantations at the end of slavery, found that 75% of all slave families had a man and a woman raising children. Mm -hmm. And for a century, that continued. That even in 1930s and 1940s, when racism was the rule of law, and, and uh, unemployment during the Depression was 40 and 50% of the black community, we have the highest marriage rate of any group in the country. And that our elderly people could walk unafraid of their grandchildren. And, and so we, when we were denied access to hotels, we built our own insurance companies, our own railroads, our own vaudeville theaters with the orchestra pits. All this we did uh, in, in, in response to oppression. It wasn't, as 1619 uh, 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 says, a broadcast that somehow we were, our, our history is from the plantation, from the slave ships, the plantations, the ghettos, to welfare. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to, saying, I'm talking to so Robert L. Woodson, Sr. He's founder and president of the Woodson Center. The website is woodsoncenter.org. Uh, Bob, what happened to the family? Uh, is it the welfare state? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Larry, the, the family was strong. What, what was really enabled us to survive was a nuclear family and our Christian values. And that's why uh, up until 1965, 85% of all black families had a man and a woman raising children. 
and they talk about mass incarceration. If you look at the turn of the century up until the 1960s, black incarceration rates were about 27 to 30 percent. And yet, in the, uh, and then when the poverty programs came and we disconnected work from income and, 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 and we removed the stigma. When I grew up, man, you never wanted to be on relief. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my, 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 parents, my, parents, to, my parents called it on the county. And it was, and, right and, on the county. And, and, and it, was not, it was not a flattering thing to say. No. And so they had to remove the stigma of it. And so, and then, and then they, be, and, and then the poverty programs, and and the federal government began to offer, uh, uh, open up offices, and actually recruit people into welfare, so that you have maybe an influx of about three to four million blacks into the welfare system in major cities with in it, with a period of three years. Bob, we're going to leave it right. Bob, Bob, don't, New York was four percent. Bob, don't go away. Bob Woodson is my guest, founder, president of the Woodson Center, WoodsonCenter.org. Don't go away.